My hand cramps with pain as I finish my 15th AP stat homework problem. I wipe the sweat off my brow and dive into number 16. I can feel the heat from my lamp blaring down at me like I'm in an interrogation room, when all of a sudden, I hear a soft beacon of hope coming from the kitchen. Dinner time, my mom yells through the house. I let out a huge sigh of relief and make my way to the kitchen. I walk through the doorframe and immediately the aromas of the feast that I am about to devour hit me. My sister sits down beside me and my brother across from me, and my mom sits down the juicy chicken in the middle of the table. I can practically taste the succulents and can see beads of moisture drip off of it. As my dad sits down next to my sister, my mom sits down the pan of cheesy potatoes and green beans, and the aroma hits me like a truck of enticement, and my mouth starts to water. Finally, my mom takes her seat next to my dad, my family says grace, and we all dive in. Everyone is munching on their food, and all you can hear is the chewing of others, but not for long. As soon as that first bite of food is swallowed, the conversation starts flowing, and the silence turns into a dull roar. In no time, my family is engaged in a full-blown, but civil, screaming match. Ideas and bits of food are flying across the table as the topic of welfare is discussed. Those on welfare just abuse it, and don't go looking for jobs, my dad claims after a bite of chicken. And without missing a beat, I come right back with, Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can punish those who actually need it. The working poor are an actual class, Dad. I say, letting my sassiness get the better of me as I take a bite of potatoes. As my dinner table turns into the floor of Congress, I can sm only smile thinking back to it. Although in that moment I was fuming mad at my dad, the conversation and the conversations yet to come, and the ones that preceded that, gave me the skills I needed to become the opinionated, headstrong person I am today. I believe that it is important for every family to sit down and eat dinner together. Family dinners is where I learn to form my own opinions, which I believe is one of the most important things someone, especially someone young, can do for themselves. Topics ranging from favorite book to fiscal policy were talked about, and I was always able to have my own, own opinion about every one. Not only did family dinners teach me about forming my own opinions, but it also taught me to stick up for my own ideas while respecting others. I had to learn to control that boiling pot of anger that wells inside you when someone disagrees with you. And seeing as my family rarely agreed on anything, this allowed me to learn how to respectfully take others' opinions into account while still sticking up for what I believe in, a skill that is not easily mastered. Most importantly, my family dinners allowed me to make connections with all of my family members. Even if I hadn't seen my brother or sister all day, I always knew I would see them at the dinner table and would hear about their day. Being able to hear about their accomplishments as well as their failures allowed me to congratulate and provide support when appropriate. Having a close family is a blessing that I will never take for granted. Having such a strong support system at home allows me to branch out and take, the, take risks because I know there will always be someone to pick me up, dust me off, and help me figure out my next move. Family truly is forever, and I am privileged that mine will be with me every step of the way. This is why I believe in family dinners. Family dinners are where I found my voice and learned how to let it be heard, a skill I'm sure I'll find helpful when I'm on the real floor of Congress. Fingers crossed, of course.